Okay, so it's been a while since I uh, first released this video, which was really intended for how to adjust your track cleaning pads for maximum effectiveness. I think in the first Mark 1 video, I was advocating the use of this stuff, which is um, isopropyl alcohol. Um, and it was available at the time in Maplins, but um, of course Maplins are no longer with us on the high street. Um, so... Yeah, you can still buy isopropyl alcohol quite readily from eBay, etc. Um, and it, you know, I also had been using for some time um, methylated spirits, you know. And I think the debate around modelers at that time was to do with the usefulness of um, IPA against um, methylated spirits, if you like. And this stuff was, yeah, it may leave a little bit of a residue, not that it's noticeable. This stuff's a lot clearer, so most modellers seem to be using it. The main point of this is that actually both of these cleaning um, cleaning solvents, if you like, are pretty good at removing the stuff from your track anyway. But I guess the debate has shifted in recent years because there's been one or two articles prim primarily coming across from America um, to do with the science behind track cleaning. And I've also done some experiments myself, looking at the top surface of the track with my camera, to try and understand if things like track rubbers and what have you are actually abrasive. I'll, I'll share those results with you as well. Uh, but the debate's really shifted now in terms of the actual type of solution involved. Now, both of these, as I say, will adequately clean your track. They're readily available and it's dead easy, as, as you can see from the video, to put these onto the cleaning pads on your track cleaning car. The issue comes in that both of these substances are polar to some degree. Now, going back to some history here, originally when this was sold, Triang used carbon tetrachloride, which was a really good and effective cleaner. Um, these days, of course, it's quite frowned upon to use such substances because um, they do affect your health, um, with serious disclaimers, and I, I would say if you've got any carbon tetrachloride, I'd chuck it away. We used to use it in the electronics industry for cleaning circuit boards and all sorts of stuff. You know, the modern equivalents like isopropyl alcohol are probably just as effective, but a lot less, um, a lot less lethal. If you read Wikipedia and carbon tetrachloride, and I'll leave the links below, you will be quite surprised. But it used to go by the name of Gen Clean and all sorts of other things. But um, So I wouldn't recommend the use of carbon tetrachloride. The, the sort of recent science behind this has shown that some of these substances fall into... Um, the band have been either polarised or otherwise. Now that's at an atomic level and um, the chart, I'll put this chart up on screen in a second, but you'll be able to see that carbon tetrachloride sort of in the blue and actually isopropyl alcohols further down the chart and there's a vast difference between the two. Now, the debate's really shifted because people are looking at what is the electrical contact effectiveness between your track and your wheels. And that's really where things are um, progressing because it's, it's absolutely fine to clean some of the um, crud off your track with either of these cleaners. They'll do a job. They shift the rubber and they shift the general build-up. But actually, when you analyse the chemical content of what it is that builds up on your track, what you find is that it's fairly horrible black stuff that's resultant from what they call microarching between the wheels and the contact in the rails. So that microarching actually leaves a deposit behind. And as you'll see from um, some of the camera footage that I've got with some of the track cleaners of course if you've got an abrasive you know a gouge in the top surface of your track that, that can quite easily form a pit for this black stuff to fit in and we've all cleaned this black stuff off it gets gunged around your wheels and it gets gunged across your track and uh, you wouldn't be watching this if you didn't have that problem it's a railway modeler's 
Achilles heel, of course. Um, so what can we do to get rid of it? And like I said, both of these products will shift it. Um, but the focus now is how do I stop it coming back? Or more importantly, how do I prevent it happening in the first place? So there is another substance that I'd like to introduce you to. It's a switch cleaning lubricant. It's mostly, I came across it from uh, the electronic days and playing electric guitar. You can use it in amplifiers, specifically in volume pots, where you have all that crackling as you turn your volume up and down, takes all that noise away from your amplifier. You know, I've kept a can in my guitar case for donkey's years, really. This is an electrical contact cleaner, it's, but it's also got a slight bit of lubricant in there. And what the lubricant does is actually forms a slight coating where you've left it behind and cleaned all the crud off. It keeps the coating to stop the oxidisation. Now the oxidisation is a result of the electrical microarching on top of nickel silver rail which readily oxidises or in other words rusts. Now if you want to know more about this kind of process um, there is a video below that I'll share the link with. Uh, for which I'm eternally grateful, um, which discusses this in quite some detail. There is some other stuff. You can also get electrical contact cleaner from, believe it or not, the makers of WD-40. Now, I'm not advocating putting WD-40 on your track, but certainly um, WD-40 contact cleaner, which is available. Um, you may have to search it and track it down on the internet or eBay. Um, it varies between about six and ten pounds a can in the UK. So I'm just going to show you um, how effective that is in terms of cleaning your track. So I have with me here a um, a track cleaning car which I've actually fitted the pads to. Now unfortunately this stuff only comes in an aerosol um, but you can actually just soak your pad completely bung it on the track and let's just see how effective that is. You know my reels are fairly clean at this point I actually did this a couple of days ago. Okay so here we go now I've done uh, about five minutes running with the uh, with the service also let's just have a quick uh, a quick look at the uh, pads and see what, see what state they're in okay and as you can see that seems to be pulling the uh, pulling the dirt out quite readily okay uh, in general um, what this will do is exactly the same as um, the cleaner it'll remove the stuff but it also leaves behind it as it evaporates it leaves behind it a coating which will hopefully improve the electrical conductivity which is exactly what you want for contact improvement that should mean according to the claims that um, your rails are kept cleaner for longer with this stuff being polarized correctly um, that should attract less dust and grime and crap in the first place and if it does then there is a coating on there of course and that coating should prevent some oxidization. So in short, you should have longer between cleanings than using standard isopropyl alcohol. The choice is yours, um, and I'll leave it up to people to experiment and decide what they're gonna do, and perhaps you can leave me some comments below if you've done that already. Um, but as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty safe on plastics and it's pretty good. Uh, like I said, the other stuff that's available is the uh, WD-40 contact cleaner and there are various other switch cleaning lubricants on the market, of course. For the science behind that, of course, have a look in the links below. Hopefully that gives you enough of an understanding of what track cleaners you can use with your track cleaning car. I talked earlier about the effect on the rails of things like track rubbers. So I just wanted to show you quickly these uh, this series of photographs as to the effect of the use of track rubbers and other abrasives on your rails. So the photographs were taken using a uh, video camera. In terms of magnification, you're talking about 30 to 50 times in this set of photographs. And uh, 
Number one illustrates what an untreated rail sort of looks like. Now this is just a piece of rail I've had lurking around in my scrap box. It's not necessarily new but it looks fairly new. So we've all done it. I've used a fiberglass pencil on occasion and if you look at uh, photograph number two you'll see that there are just some lines starting to appear as a result of the scratches on the fiberglass pencil. It's a good way to remove um, stubborn crud and what have you but um, yeah it does leave a little bit of pit. You can see from diagram three however that um, this is the same rail after the use of a granite based track rubber and in the top photograph there in number three you can see the bits of rubber and granite left behind and in the bottom photograph in number three you can see quite clearly see the scoring on top of the rails that's not present in number one. Um, and just for some comparison there I've used some wet and dry paper over another piece section of rail um, this just happens to be 1500 grit, it's fairly nice and smooth but if you compare number 4 against number 1 I'm not advocating the use of wet and dry paper every time you clean your rails but you can see that comparing 4 and 3 that actually 1500 grit wet and dry paper is actually less abrasive than your granite based track rubbers I don't particularly like the use of um, track rubbers, I still have one myself just for those stubborn areas um, but I have come across one recently that's um, aluminium oxide based with rubber. It's very very good if you compare 3 and 5. It loses very little um, shedding behind and it, it leaves a much smoother rail. So if you're going to use one, I suppose the moral of this story is use an aluminium oxide based one. Um, I can tell you a popular make of that but um, I'll let you do your own research. But clearly if you look at the photograph in number 3 um, that sort of pitting left behind uh, at a microscopic level will certainly collect any debris, especially off traction tyres. If we were to zoom into each of those scratches you'll see bird edges. So you really need to be aware that smooth clean track is, is the way to go here. The other reason I wanted to actually update this video was to show you this. Along with keeping your track clean, it's obviously fairly imperative that you keep your locomotive wheels clean as well. So, again, available through my website on eBay. This is the service cradle. Allows you to pull really any double O gauge engine at any angle, depending on what you want to do with it, and stops it floating around off your bench, of course. I'll just demonstrate here. I've got a flying Scotsman that I've had in bits this morning, so... Um, any any steam engine um, and it just stops it holds it cradles it keeps it um, keeps it from getting damaged and of course if you've got modern engines that you don't want to um, you don't want to damage you can also carry them around in the in the cradle without getting your fingers all over them so if you want to clean the wheels you peak your wheel cleaner get the wheels spinning and clean off the crud that way or indeed what you can actually do is apply some of your switch cleaner or your isopropyl alcohol and give those wheels a right good clean so um, there's no good putting uh, ropey locos and ropey wheels back on uh, on nice clean track otherwise you've got it all to do again next week as we always say